Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. <coughs> our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and he will forgive me of iniquity upon my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and has given His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Those that believe and are baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Amen. We continue with our intro to the day. From Psalm 115. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they have been in the world. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord. Both the small and the great. We will bless the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For the end of the whole. We speak our Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We join together in our colic of the day. Let us pray. O God, we see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body, from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first two readings. covenant. 
to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond to our first reading with our gradual from Hebrews chapter 12. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for our verse in the reading of the Gospel. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The Holy Gospel for the second Sunday in Lent is found in the eighth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And he called to him the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and for the gospel's, will save it. And what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our holy faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of God, and the life of my life. Amen. Please be seated for our message here. Jairus' daughter and the, uh, the widow's son. 
and he proclaimed the good news for people to hear, and still there were people who got it wrong. There was a general idea that he was a prophet, but come on, John the Baptist, he was dead at least a couple of years, and Elijah, he was taken up in a fiery chariot centuries before. You would have thought that the people would have gotten it right. We look at this and we, we say, certainly if we saw Jesus, and if we knew what was going on, but as for these people, well, all we can say is for his sake. <laughs> Why didn't they get it right? So having heard this, Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter responds and he says, you are the Christ. Then Jesus strictly charges him to tell no one about him because he had yet to go to Jerusalem where he would suffer and die. Matthew chapter 16 expands upon this interaction and puts it this way. Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. But Peter, by the power of the Holy Spirit, was able to make that confession of faith. Peter, by God's insight given to him, was able to proclaim that Jesus was the Christ. Peter was able to get it right. So Peter, having gotten it right, Jesus then proceeds with what we call the first prophecy of the Passion, the first direct prophecy that he gives to his disciples about what's going to happen. So Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, so this is what the Christ is going to do. He goes on in our text and he says this. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. No parables, no obfuscation, no object lessons here for the twelve. He tells them plainly. So what was Peter's reaction? Did he say, Lord, thank you, you're now so clear. Now we understand. No, instead Peter takes Jesus aside and begins to rebuke Jesus. Jesus turns and sees his disciples and Peter, remember, was the leader of the disciples. Every time there's a listing given in the Gospels of the Twelve Apostles, Peter is listed first. And there's a reason for that. He was a natural leader. And oftentimes when he asked questions, he seemed to ask on behalf of the other twelve. And when he spoke, oftentimes he spoke for the other eleven. Jesus, though, rebukes Peter and he says, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. By God's inspiration and God's power, Peter was able to get it right and confess that Jesus was the Christ. But then on his own initiative as to what it was that the Christ was going to do, uh, Peter got it wrong, and Jesus rebuked him. My goodness, we can certainly turn to Peter and say, For he say, Peter, you were there. You were with him. You lived together. The Lord was right in front of you. You saw these miracles. You heard what he had to say. You knew that he just wasn't an ordinary teacher or rabbi. You knew that he had a special mission above and beyond what God had given to any prophet before or anyone who would follow him. We look at Peter, and again, we shake our heads, and we say, For he say, come on, he say. <laughs> yes! I hope you got that at home. I hope you were able to join it. You would think that Peter would have been able to get it right. You know, it's not a great idea to argue with the Lord. 
And with this rebuke, Peter stepped over the line, and Jesus was certainly right in rebuking him, in putting him in his place, and in schooling him. So how about you? How are you at dealing with rebukes? When you are in the wrong and someone else is in the right, how do you respond? Is there denial? Do you say, no, 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 you're wrong. <laughs> Even though you're the one who's in the wrong. Do you shift the blame? Do you say, no, no, it wasn't me, it was that person. <laughs> Do you dig yourself in deeper, only digging yourself further into a hole? Do you put yourself above the person who rebuked you? Do you say, oh, well, maybe he got this right, but he's wrong on so many other things. You can barely listen to him. Or... Do you mouth epithets under your breath much stronger than for me say? Uh-huh. Yes, some of the above, all of the above. How do you respond when someone rebukes you? Well, this wouldn't be the first time that Peter was wrong and would be chastised. It wouldn't be the last. He got it wrong when he told Jesus that he would never deny him. Remember, on Monday, Thursday, Jesus says that uh, the disciples will fall away. And each of them say, no, 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 they deny it, they shake their heads. And uh, the Lord gives special mention to Peter, he says, no, nah, before, before the rooster crows three times, you will deny me. And uh, Peter didn't want to hear it, and uh, after his denials, uh, well, yeah, he mouthed epithets under his breath. When it said that Peter swore to oath, read that he cussed, right? He said something that you wouldn't say in polite company. And as we saw recently, Paul confronted Peter in Antioch because Peter was trying to reach out to both Jewish Christians and Gentile converts, kind of playing both ends against the middle, misrepresenting how he actually was living his life, um, not as a strictly observant Jew, but rather as um, one whose life had been opened up by the gospel. Um, and Peter was confronted because Peter was wrong. You know, when Peter was confronted, it wasn't just to put him in his place. It was so that he would learn, so that he would have a growth opportunity. And by God's grace, that's what it was for St. Peter. He went on and became a great missionary. He went out and preached the gospel. He went out and was ultimately martyred for his belief in Jesus and his witness to the truth. All of those times when Peter didn't get it right, the Lord used as opportunities for him to see where he was wrong so that he might understand and follow the Lord. And ultimately, he did follow the Lord in the way of the cross, according to church tradition, being martyred, crucified upside down, um, for bearing witness to the truth that he had in his heart. May you and I also use those opportunities that the Lord chastises us, that the Lord corrects us, that the Lord rebukes us as opportunities to grow in our faith. Because all of us, you see, are practicing our faith. We're practicing for that great and glorious day when we will be with the Lord in glory. And until then, there will be times when we'll get it wrong. There will be times when we need to be corrected. There will be times when we need to be redirected. There will be times when we look at the things that we've done and we shake our own head and we say, For his sake! May the Lord use all of those opportunities for our own sake and for the welfare of our souls. In the name of Jesus, dear friends, Amen. 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 We actually sing of Peter and his testimony and his witness in the next verse of our message hymn. <laughs>
everyone for their donations, both the ones left in the back plates and the entrance to the church, as well as to the donations that have been sent in, dropped off, or electronically delivered to our church. Uh, we thank everyone for the donations which have enabled our ministry to continue. Um, we now have the opportunity to approach our Lord in prayer. You are invited to rise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, who inspired Simon Peter, first among the apostles, to confess Jesus as Messiah and Son of the living God, keep your church steadfast upon the rock of this faith, so that in unity and peace we may proclaim the one truth and follow the one Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. And in your mercy, Lord God, we ask that you would look with favor and compassion on those for whom we pray this day. We remember our members, Pat, yeah. Beth yeah. and Juliet, Charlene, yeah. Mitch, yeah. Dennis, yeah. Lois, yeah. Craig, yeah. Ursula, yeah. Paul, Darlene, yeah. Jean, yeah. Phil, Kristen, yeah. Nancy, yeah. Dorothy, yeah. Cheryl, yeah. Betty, yeah. Hans. We remember friends and family, including John Gatsky, yeah. Reverend yeah. James yeah. Clockout, yeah. Susan, yeah. Dee, yeah. Georgia, the Ward family, Zach, Jen, Billy, Deborah, John, Mark, Father Lewis. We pray for those in mourning, the families of Carl Lerman Sr., Michael Giamoni, and Andy High. We ask for protection on our friends serving in the military, including John, Jerry, Joshua, Heather, Trevor, Leslie, Dawson, Ashley, as well as those that we now name in our hearts. Lord God, we ask that you would look upon these, our friends and family, with love and compassion, that you would strengthen the weak, that you would heal the sick, that you would comfort those who mourn, and that you would provide guidance and hope to all who turn to you in their great time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask this in all things, in the name of our Savior Jesus, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray our morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my dreams in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may not go power of me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you. Always. And all Always. Always. Please share some sign of the peace with the person you are with. <laughs> we continue with the speaking of our Agnes Dei. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have 
have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. Please be seated. The ushers will bring you forward to receive the meal.
Christ given for you. Take and drink this precious blood shed for you. May our Lord's body and blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith to everlasting life. Depart in his joy, his hope, and his peace, for Jesus comes to set you free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You rise for prayer in our closing hymn. Serve the Lord in joy. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.